Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 52. Welcome, and welcome back, depending on on who you are. And thanks to everyone who has helped me celebrate 50 episodes over the last couple of episodes, like the long birthday week that never ends. Um, So we had giveaways for Minky Kim's new book, um, Zaka Wool Applique, and a Fat Quarter Shop gift card. And if you won, you have been notified and maybe even received your prizes by now. So um, again, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. I, in some ways, can't even believe that I've uh, kept this up for this long. I kind of sometimes start things and don't follow through. So I definitely keep doing it because of the great feedback that I get from you guys. So thank you so much. So here we are. It is mid-July. We're having some really nice weather here in Southern California. Not too excruciatingly hot, um, at least for now. We really get our heat more towards actually August and even September. Um, and we were able to, my husband and I got out of the house, took a day off of work and went to the Huntington Gardens, which is this beautiful botanical garden. I don't even know exactly know why we did it. We used to take the kids there, me especially when, um, you know, I was a stay at home mom with little kids. We'd go there to the children's garden. It was just a great way to get out of the house and they were probably all free to get in actually. Um, and it's, it's about an hour away. So it's not something we did, you know, every weekend, but I definitely love it. It's got a great, uh, museum it's a library too so anyways somehow I guess it came up in the news that um that it was open and we're just like you know what let's get out of here so it it seemed like a pretty um safe thing to do since it's about an hour away all the the inside the museums are closed they um you have to make a they, they limit the number of people there so you had to make a reservation and when you come in they took your temperature. That's the first time I've had to do that where they did the little, you know, infrared thing on my forehead and you had to wear masks and stay obviously distanced. And, um, a lot of the paths were, were actually closed off, which was a little disappointing. We had a hard time sometimes figuring out how to get from one area, area of the garden to another. It's huge. It's like, I don't even know. It's acres and acres and acres. Um, and they had like arrows on the sidewalk that, you know, it was like a one way thing, you know, so they, they did every precaution you could take and, uh, it just felt really good. It was, you know, I'm really into the, the yard and the garden right now. So it was fun to, you know, get inspired. My favorite part of, uh, the Huntington gardens is the herb garden. And it's just, it's kind of more of a formal arrangement. And um, I like walking through and just identifying things and feeling really smug about that. And that's actually um, the rose garden, which I kind of like rose gardens. I don't really get roses, to be honest with you. Um, But um, there is a rose garden there. And then there's a tea house that's, you know, like a place to go have like high tea, which was closed. But that's kind of a fun thing to do when it's open. So anyways, you know, it, it did me a world of good to just take the day off of work and go get out of the house. Um, just the two of us. It was very nice. And I'm glad that we did because it's probably closed down now because California is rolling back. Um, I don't know if it's actually closed or down or not, but um People were, you know, we had opened up for indoor dining, um, and I don't know, was I guess the mall was open. Like we've not done any of the things that were allowed. We haven't dined indoors, haven't gone to a mall or a movie theater or a gym. Um, so, but apparently all those are closed again. We also went through the, you know, excruciating decision about what to do about my high schooler and schooling, and the school district presented this whole thing. You know, you totally can be online, but they presented this very complicated but well thought out blended model and we just you know it's my son's senior year of high school and so we decided to go for that and then the next day uh, the county and probably the whole state said no no in-person school for at least I don't know the fall so disappointing disappointing but you know in some ways I bet you can relate to this um It was a little scary to think about letting him go to school. It was like for two and a half hours a day was how they were going to do it with tons of precautions. Um, But to have the decision kind of taken out of our hands, um, you know, in some ways, 
<laughs> was a little bit of a relief. So yeah, it's just, you know, we're just still adjusting. Um, you know, no vacation really this year. And it's funny because I see people online doing what seems like normal things. And that is just like not our reality here. So it's very, it's very interesting. So anyways, so that's, that's going on. I was able to see um, a friend. Um, I think I mentioned last podcast that I'm, you know, I, I check in with all three of my kids about, you know, are you getting online with your friends? Are you, you know, like getting some interaction? I don't want people to feel, even though we're all together here, to be feel isolated um, from their friends. But I'm not really taking care of myself <laughs> in that way. Although I do Vox with a friend. Um, it's an app where you just like record yourself talking and then they record and it's like an ongoing asynchronous conversation. Love it. I have several people that I correspond with that day and one in particular every day, every single day. And so I think that is what kind of keeps me going. But, you know, one of my really good friends in town here, um, I haven't seen her, I, you know, we were thinking maybe since February in person. And this is somebody that I used to like walk with every single day. We've known each other since our uh, kids, our oldest kids. We've known each other for like 21 years. Anyways, we met at the park and um, sat at a picnic table, like as, just as far as part as we could with masks. And we're just able to catch up for a couple hours. And man, again, what a difference that made to me psychologically. Um, I looked forward to it for like a whole day, um, which is always nice to look forward to things. And then, um, yeah, it just, it kind of filled my cup. So that was, that was really nice. It just kind of brought home to me that we do need to, um, make sure that we are not, you know, it's funny that, that, that we're not isolated from each other. What I was going to say is I've heard that the word social distancing is not the word we really should have hung this on. It should have been physical distancing because socially we need to be connected. And uh, so I like that word social or uh, physical distance. Um, the other kind of fun thing that has been going on is, uh, that I mentioned last time, is Dara Thomason, um, who is a quilter, life coach, weight loss coach, all around mentor and guru, uh, did this um, free five-day challenge in, um, I, I created a, a little Facebook for it, group for it, but you know, it was offered to all of you, um, people who were following Simple Handmade Every Day. And um, it was amazing. The response was amazing um, for the people who signed up. And then, um, you know, she, she, I thought that was, we techno, technologically changed course. She, she did Zoom meetings, but they were, um, the recordings were posted in our Facebook group so that you could catch replays. And, and, you know, it was a working week for me. So I was able to, um, log into most of them, but sometimes I had to leave early. So every night I would definitely be waiting for that link to be, um, posted so that I could, um, pop in and, uh, definitely and watch those meetings because the first part of it so the first day she um presented how to create your ultimate food plan and um i have seen a, a similar presentation from her before so i already knew what that was going to be and, and so i started it it's going to be almost three weeks um and and I, I haven't actually followed her like menu specifically but the spirit of it, which is, hold on to your hats, no flour or no sugar. And this corresponds so perfectly with what I have been reading about weight loss and health. And um, and I used to be pre-diabetic. Uh, my blood sugar was creeping up there. I was able to cut back on carbs and lose some weight and got out of the danger zone. But it's still very much, um, you know, just I, I feel like I could tip over into that territory any day now. So, you know, I want to keep that number moving down and not be a tenth of a, a decimal on the, the right side of <laughs> of being um, pre-diabetic, if you know what I mean. I'm just out of the range. So um, I've been doing some reading and then her thing just, you know how it's like the law of attraction. It, it all, a bunch of things came together. Um, so I read, I've, I'm going to talk about this in the book section, but I um, read this book called The Obesity Code. And which dovetailed perfectly with um, what Dara was teaching about um, how the the real issue with weight loss is insulin and having too much insulin being insulin resistance, insulin resistant, how insulin is a fat storage hormone. And what you need to do is get your body more sensitive to insulin again and get those levels down and refined flour and refined sugar 
are the two biggest stimulators of insulin. So you need to just knock those out of your diet, which sounds overwhelming. Um, and so uh, I just took it two weeks at a time. I, I made a, uh, a deal, like a challenge with a friend to do two weeks. I failed the first day because I hadn't planned for it. You know, I meal planned and my daughter was cooking and she made pasta. And so actually I totally failed the first day. Um, and then my friend called me on it and then I have been good ever since. And the cool thing about it, even though it sounds overwhelming, is that when you get off of it and you push through, I did kind of feel a little bit crappy. I don't eat a lot of sugar, but I definitely eat flour in the form of um, bread and bread and more bread probably. Um, but the cravings for those things and my hunger has changed so much in three weeks. It's kind of remarkable. Um, when you get off that burning sugar, sugar, sugar all the time, you, your hunger really gets under control. So anyways, for what it's worth, I'm doing that also combined with intermittent fasting, um, which has also gotten tremendously easier. I failed doing intermittent fasting in the past because I felt like it kind of triggered some disordered eating that I used to have, um, or where I was thinking about food too much. But, but again, somehow I think by maybe getting off the flour and sugar, I'm not thinking about, I'm not craving things. And so I'm, I'm pretty much able to, to, to do a solid, at least 16 hour fast. Um, and so, yeah. And so Dara's plan is, you know, um, it, as well as this book in the obesity code is three meals and no snacks. And um, just getting off snacking, it was hard. A lot of it was a little bit hard at the beginning, but I'm just three weeks in. I'm feeling like I can totally do this. And um, and just for accountability, I'm down six pounds. Um, so, and, you know, I know when you go a little bit lower carb, you lose some water weight. But yeah, so I just thought maybe for accountability's sake, I would check in with you guys and say, you know what, this is what's working for me. Um, so she is running a um, another five-day challenge in Lisa Bonjean's group. Um, so you might want to, I don't know if I've got a link to that or what, but I'll, I'll see if I can dig something up. Um, but it, you might look around on Facebook for Lisa Bonjean and see if you can get into that if you missed the one that we did, because it was totally worth it. Okay, actually, now that I've talked all about the food, what I wanted to do is tell you about, um, Dara taught about the food in the first day, but there were four more days where she basically didn't even talk about the food. She taught, she, she gave a little, um, you know, a, sort of a lecture at the beginning about how you're dealing with feelings, how you're dealing with emotions and, and things like that. And then she did live coaching with people, which was amazing to see. So people who were brave enough got up, got in there and just, you know, talked about what kind of an issue was. And she has a model she works through. This is probably pretty common with coaches. I'm not really sure. Um, where she talks about the circumstance and um, what thoughts you have about that and the feelings that come up and and an amazing amount of information she is able to draw out in the most, you know, uh, kind and attentive way. And I think that everybody learn something from just even watching somebody else be coached. But I, I know I've heard from the people who actually took advantage of that 30 minutes of coaching and said that it was, you know, it's pretty life-changing. So um, yeah, it's just, you know, if, if this is an issue for you, definitely uh, look into that. I, th I really think that the way Dara is approaching this um, because I think a, is she's, she's on to something here because, um, she, as she likes to say, there's a couple of things. It's, it's not really, weight loss isn't really about the food and that your brain is your vet best investment. You need to kind of figure out how to be your own coach. And, um, so, um, I think a lot of us, especially quilters with our little sedentary <laughs> hobby, um, you know, there's a lot of yo-yo dieting. There's a lot of, you know, we've tried, you know, we've lost and gained in the past and this might help you kind of get to the bottom of it. And thanks to Fat Quarter Shop for sponsoring today's podcast. Today, we are going to talk about cross-stitch. Did you know that Fat Quarter Shop stocks cross-stitch supplies? They stock DMC, Classic Color Works, Weeks Dye Works, Gentle Arts, NPI Silks, and a variety of cross-stitch cloths. You will also find patterns from popular designers like Lori Holt, Stitching with the Housewives, It's So Emma, Country Cottage Needleworks, Little House Needleworks, Hands-On Designs, Heart and Hand, and much, much more. If you love to build your stash or want to try something new, they offer monthly subscriptions for fabrics, threads, and lots of kitted projects. 
Also, join Kimberly Jolly for a weekly cross-stitch update Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Central Time on Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, which is a channel that's on YouTube. I'll put a link in the show notes. Visit them online at fatquartershop.com. And as always, I will definitely put a link to that in the show notes as well. Before I forget, let's talk about my cup of tea. I am drinking Harney and Sons Paris blend, which is a flavored black tea that I bought for my daughter for Christmas. And it has, I brought it up here so I could show you, black tea, oolong tea, vanilla flavor, black currant flavor, bergamot oil, caramel flavor. It's super good. Um, And I was reminded of it because... um, a wonderful listener reached out and um, told me that uh, she had started drinking Harney tea with one of the little single cup uh, loose leaf tea brewers and, uh, and she'd given one to her daughter and they loved it and I've also given one to my daughter. <laughs> so and I use that little, mine is a Tivana brand but I guess Starbucks bought Tivana and then maybe put them out of business. Um, So there are other brands out there. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes, but it is such a great way to drink loose leaf tea, especially when you buy decent tea. I've said this before. You put just enough for one cup in there and then um, it brews. You put the hot water in there. It brews for, you know, three to five minutes and then you sit it on top of your cup and it just um, all the tea flows into your teacup and the leaves stay in the brewer and when you're using good quality tea you can brew them several times so I start with one in the morning and I will do three cups of tea from that one teaspoon of tea throughout the day and which just means you know like whatever you're spending on your tea I mean you're getting three times the value out of that so so anyways Harney and Sons Paris tea um, delicious all right let's talk quilting I am getting stuff done, people, and it makes me so, so happy. I think last podcast, I told you that I was sending two quilts to my wonderful long-arm quilter, Deanna Sanzano. Once again, I will put her uh, contact information in the show notes. She's got a, a Facebook page and an Instagram page. She does beautiful work, quick turnaround. Um, it's just absolutely professional and she's got some really cute uh, designs to choose from which was actually my problem was picking the designs <laughs> D- decision making it's not my forte so one of the quilts I sent her um, that she just really wanted to, to help me finish which I love that um, is the pineapple quilt that it was an applique quilt it, when I started this podcast nearly three years ago um, I that's the quilt I decided I was going to finish it was my whip and um, it's a very beautiful quilt. I bought it as my souvenir when I was a brand new quilter from our trip to Maui. And I had no idea really what I was buying um, when I bought it. I didn't really recognize this was an applique quilt or how it would be put together or anything, which is why it took me so long to do. Um, but then, And then I had this thing that I was going to custom quilt it. And, um, you know, it is just sat finished. I th- we went to Maui eight years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been finished for about two years and it just it came to me at some point I just had to say you were never going to quilt this just let Deanna do it so then I could not decide on the design ultimately I picked this design and I'll, I'll take a picture um, and put it in the show notes and it's a um, it's got a flower and leaves and the reason why I picked it is the flower looks like a plumeria flower I hope I'm I hope that's the right name which is a flower that is all over the island in Maui probably in Hawaii in general not 100% sure it's often what I think lays are made of it's like it is it you might think of hibiscus as the flower of Hawaii but plumeria is the one that's really everywhere and that's what it looked like to me so it just seemed perfect so and I and I love it I love the way it came out so now um I just got them back so I just need to to bind um to bind it and there is my next problem but I think I'm just going to go with what I have it's done in batiks which is also not really my thing which I did not know back then I mean they're very pretty but um the the fabrics run a whole it's like there's a the whole range of the rainbow and so um the binding it has piano key borders and so um the binding in some places I just have to accept that it's not going to look that great because there's not going to be much contrast. And I was having trouble with that concept at first. And so the answer to that, and I also have enough fabric for this, is this kind of a, one of the tan batiks that I, for some reason, have a ton of. 
And in some ways that made sense that that was going to contrast with everything, but it's just such a boring, dreary color. I can't make myself do it. So I'm just going to go with this. Um, it's kind of a green. So today, hopefully I'll be able to cut that binding and get it sewn onto the front of the quilt and then I will have a happy hand stitching project. So I'm very excited about that. I also finished that scrappy trip around the world quilt that I've been complaining about for episode after episode. That is back and she did a really cute, I picked, um, the stakes felt lower on that one um, because you know it hasn't been sitting around <laughs> for eight years and it has a, a cute loopy um, motif on that one and uh, yeah so those are two quilts I love to bind quilts so that is going to keep me going but in the meantime I actually also I knew I needed a hand project and so I dug out my hand pieced quilt along quilt from uh, going almost two years ago this was already it's basted thread basted and everything I have started hand quilting it many times never been happy with it but somehow I came across a YouTube video about hand quilting and she was using um, tape to quilt straight lines like painters tape so I just decided to do a straight up traditional cross cross hatch um, and instead of marking it, I just have a piece of painter's tape that goes, it's one inch wide and um, I just put it across the quilt and just stitch. And, and that's going well, except for the fact that I kind of forgot about that thing where you should always kind of stitch the same direction. Otherwise you get the, that weird kind of waviness and there's a place where it doesn't look great because I, I, it was the first time I placed the tape as I, I went up and then I flipped it around and I went back down the same side of the tape. And then later a little later on I said oh yeah I remember that I don't you don't do a lot of straight line quilting so I forgot that um, so I, I think I'm just gonna go with it though I think it's something maybe I can kind of steam out so that's been nice I'm not a great hand quilter at all but I really am seeing the improvement you know um, I really was having trouble getting my stitches uh, small enough at the beginning and I'm not trying to go very small but uh, you really catch on um, and also someone in the handpiece quilt along group um, has this great tip okay so I wear a thimble on my I'm right-handed on my middle finger of my right hand and that's what helps me push that that uh, needle through my hand that's underneath the quilt where I feel the needle so the needle when you're uh, hand quilting you push the needle straight down and till it touches your finger and then you kind of rock it back up and some people can wear a thimble on that finger that's underneath but I can't I need to actually feel it and so that I get this real when I'm really sewing doing a lot of hand sewing I get a big callus on that finger and I do I have tried those little ones that kind of are like a tiny little um, round piece of cork that stick to it and that is okay I can do that um, but someone in the handpiece quilt salon group had the tip of there's something you can buy like in the band-aid section called new skin which is when you want to try to I don't know it, it, it's <laughs> I don't know what it is it smells like nail polish but it's a, a like a clear wet thing you paint over your finger and it dries and it's like a liquid it's a liquid bandage so it provides a little bit of a barrier there now I eventually prick right through that um, anyways but it really helps so anyways it's called new skin and you skin um, I just did it ordered it from my target app and uh, so that's been pretty cool so yeah so I have got two quilts back I'm gonna be doing binding I'm hand quilting oh speaking of the handpiece quilts along it is finally over <laughs> I mean that in a good way we just um, had the grand prize roundup so if you are curious to see a ton of variations on that handpiece quilt there I'll put a link in the show notes but there's a, a the grand prize link up post on my blog um, they're all at the bottom because they all linked up and they are so amazing so different from each other and um, I just love hearing from people who have done a complete hand pieced quilt just like say things like I never thought I could do this. I cannot believe I saw this all the way through to the end. This was my favorite quilt of the year, you know, this kind of thing. So, so much fun. And we gave away like amazing, amazing grand prizes, four huge grand prizes of the Aliso iron and, and um, coupled with the, the wool pressing mat 
and um, a whole piecing package and EQ8 software and Fat Quarter Shop gift cards and a Stella lamp. I mean, like so many amazing prizes. So um, that was just was so much fun. All right, let's move on to books. I don't have a ton to report here. I have been listening to A Better Man by Louise Penny, which is the most recent Inspector Gamache book, which I, of course, read when, immediately when it came out. But I love to listen to them because the narrators are so good. And I have been waiting on the Libby waiting list for this for like six months. So I was so excited uh, when it showed up. So um, while I'm gardening... Um, I, that's my kind of fun thing to listen to, which I was doing this morning, which my voice sounds a little funny. I do this thing on Saturday mornings. I spend a couple hours working in the yard, in the garden, and I totally have allergies. So then my throat starts to itch and I always sound a little funny. I feel like when I record, but that's been really fun. I told you before, I guess I already spoiled this one. Um, I, last time I think I talked about, I, I was reading the book, how not to diet, um, which is also a really good book, um, a lot about eating a, a plant-based diet, um, which I'm not doing entirely, just like more plants. Um, I haven't I haven't actually given up meat at this point. Um, but The Obesity Code, um, it's one of those, it's kind of, I want to call it a pop science book. There's a lot of the science behind it so that you understand. And it just really opened my eyes. I mean, I just saw myself in these pages as to um, why I haven't been able to, to shake this weight or why I lose it and regain it. And a lot of it has to do with hormones and um, not necessarily because of a lack of willpower. And that was kind of freeing, you know? And like, I just, I really like understanding what's going on and that I need to go for periods of time between eating so that my insulin has a chance to come down whereas I was kind of a, a grazer before and that just kept my insulin levels high all the time so there you go anyways very interesting if you are uh, into that kind of thing and, and that's been kind of it I'm honestly for, I'm, I'm still plugging away on that uh, the land of painted caves I don't know when I will ever finish that book but I read it for you know 15 minutes every night before I fall asleep but at, for a thousand page book that is going to take me a while so um my daughter is reading, which I never thought I would say this, a book by Nora Roberts, who you may know is like a very prolific romance writer. Um, she's doing an internship with a, uh, a literary agency, and Nora Roberts is one of their clients. Um, and so they sent her the book, and all the interns like read it and kind of do a little book club. So it was just kind of funny. And she says it's really good. So that might be the next thing I read. She said, Mom, I think you would like this. So I'll have to check that out. We have, however been watching some movies which I love I love to watch movies there's a, a couple people in our house that don't really love movies but I do and um, the first one that I want to talk about is my daughter and I watched Sleepless in Seattle together such the 90s movies and that that movie has like a, I just I loved it and it has a kind of a, a soft place in my heart because at that point um, Meg Ryan and I had we looked very similar. We had the exact same hair <laughs> from that movie. And so many people when that came out was just like, oh my God, have you seen that movie? She looks just like you. So I saw it several times in the theater. And um, I mean, I just love the good uh, Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks, you know, rom-coms. So that was really, really fun. I kind of just forgot how, how good that movie was. So that was really fun. It was fun to share with her. And then I think last Sunday afternoon, um, my husband put on Sunset Boulevard. And that was really fun. I've never actually watched that before, but it was like such, you know, the classic film noir. That was really fun. And um, last night, we've got Disney Plus right now, right? Because we, we saw Hamilton. And I really want to watch that again before our month is up. And that clock is ticking, so I need to do that. We were just looking for something else on Disney Plus that we might um, want to watch. And we ended up watching The Princess and the Frog. And that was one of those princess... Uh, movies that came out kind of past when my kids were really watching those things. I think we have some memory that maybe we did watch, but nobody remembered it. And that was really, that was really fun. I am a little bit watching The Mandalorian, which I also want to get through before we lose our free trial, but nobody else in the family wants to watch that with me, but I am enjoying that. I've had several people reach out to me about how much they are loving Doc Martin. And um, that is something that you can watch a lot of the episodes, I believe, 
on Netflix or Prime, but to get all the all the way up to season nine, you need to get the Acorn subscription. Um, but everybody is loving that show. If you've not watched that, you have to give it a try. It is um, it's so much fun. The the imagery, you know, the setting is amazing. It is in Cornwall, and I said it before, and I'll say it again. Someday I'm going to get there. It's called Port Isaac, and I'm going to get there. And, uh, and and visit and just sink myself into the whole Doc Martin surroundings. So um, so yeah, definitely check out Doc Martin. And also several people reached out and said um, that they were now enjoying This Homely House. So that is a YouTube channel, Kate from This Homely House, um, a woman who is in uh, Northern England, and she just lives this like amazing life in the country. She lives on a farm. She's got um, chickens and she cooks and sews and knits and makes books and clay pots. I think she might weave. (laughs) And she just is so chatty and fun. I mean, she just, you know, you could just want her to be your best friend and you just hang out with her and do all these really fun things. So, um, so I just want to bring that up again because if you didn't check her out last time, you should check her out this time. Um, and oh, and I finished Agatha Raisin, which is on my rate my um, Acorn subscription, and uh, so that's a um, fun murder mystery show. I talked a lot about it last episode, but I'm a, I'm officially out of episodes on that one, so I'm a little bit sad about that. But uh, but yeah, I guess when I'm sewing my binding, I might have to just spend that time rewatching rewatching Hamilton because that's I gotta I gotta do that. Also, thank you to all of you who have reached out to me with TV shows and books that you would think that I would enjoy. So I'm definitely I'm writing those down and I will get to them. I've got a Goodreads list and and I'm definitely keeping track of those. And I really appreciate. Um, I think so many of us have a common interest, you know, like we're just kind of all cut from the same cloth. So I I trust your recommendations on that, and I'm super excited to try those. Oh, and before I forget, I wanted to tell you, I don't think I've mentioned this before. I have meant to for several podcasts. There is a new quilting podcast out there called A Quilting Life. And this is with uh, Sherry and Chelsea, who are both Moda fabric designers. And uh, they, together, it's a mother-daughter team, and they uh, create beautiful fabric. Uh, Sherry writes um, great quilting books. She's got an amazing quilting blog that she is so faithful on uh, producing content for like almost every day if not every day so um, I've listened to a couple episodes and it's so fun I mean it's just it's just, you know we cannot get enough quilting content right and they're a little more focused on quilting <laughs> than I am in this podcast so definitely go check them out um, super fun it's called a quilting life let's move on to homemaking I also had some requests for um, from people to talk a little bit more about my new hobby of kombucha so um, if the kombucha is not your thing I won't go too much here but let me just explain a little bit um, about how I got started Um, I didn't know anybody that um, had what's called a scoby which is this this the the culture Um, I mean People are a little grossed out by this, I'll be honest with you, but you shouldn't be any more grossed out by a SCOBY than you are by a sourdough starter because it's basically the same thing. And um, you know how people share, you know, sourdough starters. Um, You can do the same thing with a SCOBY. I didn't know anybody, so I bought mine online on Amazon um, from a place maybe called Fermentaholics. I'll put a link in the show notes, but that's how I started. And I just have watched basically every YouTube video (laughs) that you can on how to do it. and the best YouTube channel is called You Brew Kombucha. And she just is, she's just really clear and clean and she's got this great setup. And, and that's where I really learned to do it. But all it really is, is that you, um, you need this SCOBY, which stands for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast. And that's what, you know, that's how it ferments. And it comes with what's called starter tea. And starter tea is just actually kombucha. And, and what I've learned is that there's actually more going on in that starter tea than even the, the SCOBY. And so you start with, um, so I just bought a little package, a little foil package came from Amazon and you um, dump it into a big glass jar 
and you, you on yubu kombucha she does it a gallon at a time i do a little bit more than that and i actually have what's called a continuous brew method which means i bought um one of those big anchor hawking glass jars that has a spigot on it so that i can just um keep uh, using the spigot to to do the finished kombucha and then dump more tea in so I don't have to wash anything out every time stuff like that but it doesn't matter same idea you've got your starter tea and your scoby and you put black tea um, or a mixture of black and green or even green I, I've kind of learned that I like the straight black better um, that you've like a brewed a gallon of tea with sugar and like a cup of sugar and then you just let it sit there for, it depends on the weather, between 7 to 14 days. And um, even though I'm not eating sugar, I'm not really too worried about the kombucha because the sugar is and the caffeine from that tea is what's feeding the, um, the yeast and, and bacteria. It's good bacteria. And um, it starts to carbonate. Oh, my little cat is coming to visit us. My little blind cat. So I always like any time he will interact with me. His name's Tiger. Um, it gets a little fermented, a little carbonated in that first fermentation, and then you uh, bottle it. I put it in these little um, bottles, like that are made for when you do your own beer. They're they're thicker and able to handle pressure, and I I fill those up and then put a little something to flavor it. Now um, I think my family likes when I put in blueberry juice, um, just a couple ounces, and then then you let them ferment. It, like in the cupboard for another th two to four days and you've given them a little extra sugar to to um, build up more carbonation but I also do a lot of them where I just put in like five blueberries or raspberries um, I've also done um, ginger lemon and honey uh, mixed berries I've got some pomegranate juice that I'm gonna do next time and sometimes I just leave them plain because I actually really like the flavor of just kombucha which tastes to me a little bit like uh, ginger ale and it really tastes like ginger ale when you put some ginger in there but even plain so and the reason you would drink kombucha is it's really good for your gut and it's bubbly and carbonated so if you're trying to break a soda habit or um, for me like I like a fun fizzy drink I talked before about how I got a soda stream <laughs> have all my drinks so I've got carbonated water I've got my little carbonated kombucha and honestly um it's kind of nice to have a fun drink at dinner or while I'm cooking that's not wine because I don't want to drink wine every day. I do love my wine. I'm a red wine drinker, but you know, for many reasons, don't want to drink wine every day. But having a little fun drink that's fizzy like that, really, that carbonation is so key. So so that's my kombucha story. Um, I'm totally enjoying it. Um, every, it takes maybe an hour a week from me to uh, when I need to bottle and start my next batch and if you get kind of sick of it like you don't want to do this anymore you can just keep your little scoby and in some um, kombucha in a jar and you just leave it there for months until you're ready to come back it's called a scoby hotel <laughs> and so so that's pretty fun so um so that's my kombucha story and i guess the last thing i kind of want to talk about is something that's really been working for me wardrobe wise and that is um i created a summer capsule wardrobe this started with uh, an Australian person that I was following and she was doing a winter capsule wardrobe, but I thought, oh, you know, that's a really good idea. So I took a section of my closet and just like cleared it out and I only put in there things that I'm wearing this summer. Now, if I really want to go get something from a different section of my closet, I'm not prohibiting myself. It's not like a challenge. It was more like a convenience. So I usually um, keep like my shirts in one place and my pants in another, but I put all my pants and all my shirts um, right in one spot. And I've got basically, I mean, she was trying to do like 30 items. It was, it was like more like a challenge. So 30 items, which included jewelry and shoes and things like that. I'm not really worrying about that, but I just basically have, I've got four pairs of pants and I don't know, 10 shirts or something. And I've now at this point, I just rotate my pants. Um, and it's kind of nice because I'm not just wearing, I usually just wear jeans all the time, but it's summer and I'm just not really wearing jeans. Because of COVID, I, I probably have talked about, I've um, bought a couple pairs of like linen pants, which I love. I'm not really sure they're very flattering on me because they're pretty baggy. So I have a feeling that I look a little bigger in them, but you know what? I don't really care because they're super comfortable after you've been wearing skinny jeans for all these years. 
And so they're all just lined up there and I just take the first one and when I'm done, you know, I wear my pants usually a couple of times and I just put it at the back of the, the rack so that I'm, you know, rotating through them. And I've talked about this before that I have a pretty limited color palette. Um, this is something I discovered probably from researching capsule wardrobes. So everything goes together. Um, everything, and, and it's also very nice when you're shopping. You like, I just, I never look for anything yellow or purple or orange. Those just, I know those don't actually look good on me, but now I just like, just get rid of it. So um, all my pants are pretty neutral. They're navy, tan, or white. And all my tops are pink, navy, darker versions of pink. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, I don't love green, but I do have a couple uh, green shirts and that is, that is it. Gray. So, um, so anyway, so everything goes together and I'm just kind of loving the simplicity of just walking up to this one two foot section of my closet going, okay, I'm just, what, what can I pick from here? And, um, and it's kind of a low stakes time to do something like this because we're not really leaving the house that often, right? So it, it doesn't really matter. And it's really, I'm kind of finding new combinations that I maybe wouldn't have before. So that's, that's been kind of fun. So um, that's about it. Oh, let me talk reviews. Thank you so much, um, TMC CMC for leaving a lovely review. I appreciate it so much. Again, ratings and reviews help other people find the podcast and it has been growing, which has been really exciting and you're a big part of that. So um, definitely share um, if, you, if you enjoy it and you have friends you think would too. And also I've just gotten like just some amazing emails and people posting on the, the Facebook pages and uh, Instagram DMs of people just keeping the conversation going, just sharing their their quilts, sharing, as I said, book and show ideas, um, their, you know, appreciation for tea, all those sorts of things. It is so much fun. And I'm going to give you one last pitch for joining the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group where we can keep this conversation going. People are sharing their quilts and, and all kinds of parts of their lives. I've posted some recipes that I have found that, uh, you know, like for to help with meal planning. So join us over there. Thanks again for listening. Stay home and stay safe. Agatha Raisin, which is on my rate, my um, Acorn subscription. And uh, so that's a um, fun murder mystery show. I talked a lot about it last episode, but I'm, I am officially out of episodes on that one. So I'm a little bit sad about that. But, uh, but yeah, I guess when I'm sewing my binding, I might have to just spend that time rewatching, rewatching Hamilton because that's, I gotta, I gotta do that. Also, thank you to all of you who have reached out to me with TV shows and books that you would think that I would enjoy. So I'm definitely, I'm writing those down and I will get to them. I've got a Goodreads list and, and I'm definitely keeping track of those. And I really appreciate, um, I think so many of us have a common interest, you know, like we're just kind of all cut from the same cloth. So I, I trust your recommendations on that and I'm super excited to try those. Oh, and before I forget, I wanted to tell you, I don't think I've mentioned this before. I have meant to for several podcasts. There is a new quilting podcast out there called A Quilting Life. And this is with uh, Sherry and Chelsea, who are both Moda fabric designers. And uh, they, together, it's a mother-daughter team, and they uh, create beautiful fabric. Uh, Sherry writes um, great quilting book. She's got an amazing quilting blog that she is so faithful on uh, producing content for like almost every day, if not every day. So um, I've listened to a couple episodes and it's so fun. I mean, it's just, it's, just, you know, we cannot get enough quilting content, right? And they're a little more focused on quilting <laughs> than I am in this podcast. So definitely go check them out. Um, super fun. It's called A Quilting Life. Let's move on to homemaking. I also had some requests for um, from people to talk a little bit more about my new hobby of kombucha. So um, if the kombucha is not your thing, I won't go oh, too much here, but let me just explain a little bit um, about how I got started. Um, I didn't know anybody that um, had what's called a SCOBY, which is this, this the, the culture, um, I mean, 
people are a little grossed out by this, I'll be honest with you, but you shouldn't be any more grossed out by a SCOBY than you are by a sourdough starter because it's basically the same thing. And um, you know how people share, you know, sourdough starters. Um, that you can do the same thing with a SCOBY. I didn't know anybody, so I bought mine online on Amazon um, from a place maybe called Fermentaholics. I'll put a link in the show notes, but that's how I started. And I just have watched basically every YouTube video <laughs> that you can on how to do it. Um, and the best YouTube channel is called You Brew Kombucha. And she just is, she's just really clear and clean and she's got this great setup. And, and that's where I really learned to do it. But all it really is, is that you, um, you need this SCOBY, which stands for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast. And that's what, you know, that's how it ferments. And it comes with what's called starter tea. And starter tea is just actually kombucha. And, and what I've learned is that there's actually more going on in that starter tea than even the, the SCOBY. And so you start with, um, so I just bought a little package, a little foil package came from Amazon. And you um, dump it into a big glass jar. And you, you, on Yubu Kombucha, she does it a gallon at a time. I do a little bit more than that. And I actually have what's called a continuous brew method, which means I bought um, one of those big anchor hawking glass jars that has a spigot on it so that I can just um, keep uh, using the spigot to, to do the finished kombucha and then dump more tea in so I don't have to wash anything out every time, stuff like that. But it doesn't matter. Same idea. You've got your starter tea and your SCOBY and you put black tea um, or a mixture of black and green or even green. I, I've kind of learned that I like the straight black better. Um, that you've like a brewed a gallon of tea with sugar in it, like a cup of sugar. And then you just let it sit there for, it depends on the weather, between 7 to 14 days. And um, even though I'm not eating sugar, I'm not really too worried about the kombucha because the sugar is and the caffeine from that tea is what's feeding the, um, the yeast and, and bacteria. It's good bacteria. And um, it starts to carbonate. Oh, my little cat is coming to visit us. My little blind cat. So I always like any time he will interact with me. His name's Tiger. Um, it gets a little fermented, a little carbonated in that first fermentation. And then you uh, bottle it. I put it in these little um, bottles like that are made for when you do your own beer. They're, they're thicker and able to handle pressure. And I, I fill those up and then put a little something to flavor it. Now, um, I think my family likes when I put in blueberry juice, um, just a couple ounces. And then, then you let them ferment it, like in the cupboard for another th two to four days. And you've given them a little extra sugar to, to um, build up more carbonation. But I also do a lot of them where I just put in like five blueberries or raspberries. Um, I've also done um, ginger, lemon, and honey, uh, mixed berries. I've got some pomegranate juice that I'm going to do next time. And sometimes I just leave them plain because I actually really like the flavor of just kombucha, which tastes to me a little bit like uh, ginger ale. And it really tastes like ginger ale when you put some ginger in there, but even plain. So, and the reason you would drink kombucha is it's really good for your gut and it's bubbly and carbonated. So if you're trying to break a soda habit or um, for me, like I like a fun fizzy drink. I talked before about how I got a soda stream, <laughs> I have all my drinks. So I've got carbonated water. I've got my little carbonated kombucha. And honestly, um, it's kind of nice to have a fun drink at dinner or while I'm cooking that's not wine because I don't want to drink wine every day. I do love my wine. I'm a red wine drinker, but you know, for many reasons, don't want to drink wine every day. But having a little fun drink that's fizzy like that, really, that carbonation is so key. So so that's my kombucha story. Um, I'm totally enjoying it. Um, every, it takes maybe an hour a week from me to... Uh, when I need to bottle and start my next batch. And if you get kind of sick of it, like you don't want to do this anymore, you can just keep your little SCOBY and in some um, kombucha in a jar and you just leave it there for months until you're ready to come back. It's called a SCOBY hotel. <laughs> and so so that's pretty fun. So, um, so that's my kombucha story. And I guess the last thing I kind of want to talk about is something that's really been working for me wardrobe wise. And that is, um, I created a summer capsule wardrobe. This started with uh, an Australian person that I was following. 
and she was doing a winter capsule wardrobe. But I thought, oh, you know, that's a really good idea. So I took a section of my closet and just like cleared it out. And I only put in there things that I'm wearing this summer. Now, if I really want to go get something from a different section of my closet, I'm not prohibiting myself. It's not like a challenge. It was more like a convenience. So I usually um, keep like my shirts in one place and my pants in another, but I put all my pants and all my shirts um, right in one spot. And I've got basically, I mean, she was trying to do like 30 items. It was, it was like more like a challenge. So 30 items, which included jewelry and shoes and things like that. I'm not really worrying about that, but I just basically have, I've got four pairs of pants and I don't know, 10 shirts or something. And I've now at this point, I just rotate my pants. Um, and it's kind of nice because I'm not just wearing, I usually just wear jeans all the time, but it's summer and I'm just not really wearing jeans because of COVID. I, I probably have talked about, I've um, bought a couple pairs of like linen pants, which I love. I'm not really sure they're very flattering on me because they're pretty baggy. So I have a feeling that I look a little bigger in them, but you know what? I don't really care because they're super comfortable after you've been wearing skinny jeans for all these years. But so they're all just lined up there and I just take the first one. And when I'm done, you know, I wear my pants usually a couple of times and I just put it at the back of the, the rack so that I'm, you know, rotating through them. And I've talked about this before that I have a pretty limited color palette. Um, this is something I discovered probably from researching capsule wardrobes. So everything goes together. Um, everything, and, and it's also very nice when you're shopping. You like, I just, I never look for anything yellow or purple or orange. Those just, I know those don't actually look good on me, but now I just like, just get rid of it. So um, all my pants are pretty neutral. They're navy, tan, or white. And all my tops are pink, navy, darker versions of pink. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, I don't love green, but I do have a couple uh, green shirts and that is, that is it. Gray. So, um, so anyway, so everything goes together and I'm just kind of loving the simplicity of just walking up to this one two foot section of my closet going, okay, I'm just, what, what can I pick from here? And, um, and it's kind of a low stakes time to do something like this because we're not really leaving the house that often, right? So it, it doesn't really matter. And it's really, I'm kind of finding new combinations that I maybe wouldn't have before. So that's, that's been kind of fun. So um, that's about it. Oh, let me talk reviews. Thank you so much, um, TMC CMC for leaving a lovely review. I appreciate it so much. Again, ratings and reviews help other people find the podcast and it has been growing, which has been really exciting. And you're a big part of that. So, um, definitely share, um, if you, if you enjoy it and you have friends you think would too. And also I've just gotten like just some amazing emails and people posting on the, the Facebook pages and uh, Instagram DMs of people just keeping the conversation going, just sharing their their quilts, sharing, as I said, book and show ideas, um, their, you know, appreciation for tea, all those sorts of things. It is so much fun. And I'm going to give you one last pitch for joining the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group where we can keep this conversation going. People are sharing their quilts and, and all kinds of parts of their lives. I've posted some recipes that I have found that, uh, you know, like for to help with meal planning. So join us over there. Thanks again for listening. Stay home and stay safe. Now at this point, I just rotate my pants. Um, and it's kind of nice because I'm not just wearing, I usually just wear jeans all the time, but it's summer and I'm just not really wearing jeans because of COVID. I, I probably have talked about, I've um, bought a couple pairs of like linen pants, which I love. I'm not really sure they're very flattering on me because they're pretty baggy. So I have a feeling that I look a little bigger in them, but you know what? I don't really care because they're super comfortable after you've been wearing skinny jeans for all these years. But so they're all just lined up there and I just take the first one. And when I'm done, you know, I wear my pants usually a couple of times and I just put it at the back of the, the rack so that I'm, you know, rotating through them. And I've talked about this before that I have a pretty limited color palette. Um, this is something I discovered probably from researching capsule wardrobes. So everything goes together. Um, everything, and, and it's also very nice when you're shopping. You like, I just, I never look for anything yellow or purple or orange. Those just, I know those don't actually look good on me, but now I just like, just get rid of it. So, um, all my pants are pretty neutral. They're navy, tan, or white. And all my tops are pink, navy, darker versions of pink. 
<laughs> and I have, I don't love green, but I do have a couple uh, green shirts and that is, that is it. Gray. So, um, so anyway, so everything goes together and I'm just kind of loving the simplicity of just walking up to this one two foot section of my closet going, okay, I'm just, what, what can I pick from here? And, um, and it's kind of a low stakes time to do something like this because we're not really leaving the house that often, right? So it, it doesn't really matter. And it's really, I'm kind of finding new combinations that I maybe wouldn't have before. So that's, that's been kind of fun. So, um, that's about it. Oh, let me talk reviews. Thank you so much, um, TMC CMC, for leaving a lovely review. I appreciate it so much. Again, ratings and reviews help other people find the podcast, and it has been growing, which has been really exciting. And you're a big part of that, so um, definitely share um, if you if you enjoy it and you have friends you think would too. And also, I've just gotten like just some amazing emails and people posting on the the Facebook pages and uh, Instagram DMs of people just keeping the conversation going, just sharing their, their quilts, sharing, as I said, book and show ideas, um, their, you know, appreciation for tea, all those sorts of things. It is so much fun. And I'm going to give you one last pitch for joining the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group where we can keep this conversation going. People are sharing their quilts and, and all kinds of parts of their lives. I've posted some recipes that I have found that, uh, you know, like for to help with meal planning. So join us over there. Thanks again for listening. Stay home and stay safe. So I've just gotten like just some amazing emails and people posting on the, the Facebook pages and uh, Instagram DMs of people just keeping the conversation going, just sharing their their quilts, sharing, as I said, book and show ideas, um, their, you know, appreciation for tea, all those sorts of things. It is so much fun. And I'm going to give you one last pitch for joining the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group where we can keep this conversation going. People are sharing their quilts and, and all kinds of parts of their lives. I've posted some recipes that I have found that, uh, you know, like for to help with meal planning. So join us over there. Thanks again for listening. Stay home and stay safe. that, uh, you know, like for to help with meal planning. So join us over there. Thanks again for listening. Stay home and stay safe.